What up, world? It's your boy Trees Trim signing on screaming, go get the money. And welcome back to another episode of the Hot Seat Podcast. I am, of course, your host. And this podcast is all about putting a spotlight on entrepreneurs, small business owners, black-owned businesses, athletes, musicians, artists in our community. And today we have the pleasure of speaking with none other of Oceanside's very own Miss Mashala. Hi, y'all. With the complete look. Mm. Because she ain't just giving you a look. All of it. It's got to be complete. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, you a cosmetologist, mm -hmm. shop owner. Yes. You know what I mean? So, we throwing all that out there. Okay. Uh, uh, and we're going to talk about that. All but right, right now, you know how this show starts. Yes. Tell us who you are. Who are you? I'm a small town girl. I've been in Oceanside since I was 16. And I'm not going to reveal my age now for it. But it's been about 30 years. And I'm just a simple girl who just likes to have tr style and like to make sure that my friends feel like they're stylish. And that's pretty much my goal. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, you enjoy making sure you're not only fresh, but everybody else is Absolutely. fresh Absolutely. Well. Collectively. We need to all be fresh. Yeah. To death. Yeah. You're not segregating the freshness. Absolutely not. And if you need you're a little bit of help, I fresh. can help you with the freshness. It doesn't okay. matter. Okay. So, you know, and normally I would say with any beautician, mm -hmm. cosmetologist, cosmetologist uh, barbers, all, we are a lot more than people that get your hair right because we do give stylist tips. Yes. We are counselors when it's a listening ear. Absolutely. We can give a little advice and take some advice. Absolutely. You know? um, so I think that's really cool that. It's just in your heart to make sure that everybody stay fresh. Right. I call it like my behind the chair ministry because you get, you know, I'm going to get what you give and you're going to give what I get. Right. Um, and, you know, there's a lot for us to learn from each other. And I touch you. So I'm feeling your vibes. You're feeling my vibes. And, mm -hmm. you know, we just can can all just, you know, get everything out. Talk. We are really therapists. We're behind the chair therapists, honestly. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, I've seen people through marriages divorce all of it so it's like and then you probably see me at my worst too so it's good that we kind of we build relationships and we can do all that behind the chair in our what 45 50 minutes to an hour it's nice yeah i like the way you wrap that up because you know i'm usually thinking of it from like a barber perspective so mm -hmm. like when it's i think it's probably even more Cause it's hard for it's hard for some males to open up, but I right. think women they they open up to one another a little bit more. So you guys are probably getting yeah. a really good experience out of that. Like, yeah. And not only that, but you walk in, you looking kind of crazy, but you walk <laughs> out, you looking <laughs> yeah. good. You got some stuff off your chest. Yeah. So yeah. do you think we should start charging more? You now? know, it should or be what? a little bit just for the the therapy part of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um. Shop owner, mm -hmm. uh, cosmetologist. T t talk to me about um, your road to getting your license first. Let's start there. Well, first I um, was just a beauty salon junkie where I would go every week to get my hair done. Mm -hmm. And then there was a lady named Brenda Davis who owned Talk of the Town Salon. And I would go to her shop all the time. So then with that, I, I didn't do the Shout traditional. Shout out Miss Brenda too, man. Brenda Davis, 760 Natural. Yeah. So what I did was I didn't want to do a, tra uh, a traditional beauty college sort of thing. So I did an apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. So I was able to work in, work in the salon because I did do this kind of as I was already a grown up. So I was already like had my own apartment and all that stuff. So I didn't go to beauty college until I was 23. Okay. So what I did was I was able to work. And then go to school on Tuesdays and then do that for, I forget, however many months it was. But I started with Brenda. She was my trainer and I was her apprentice. And then after that, I took my license test, passed it. And then I started working in her salon. I worked there for 10 years. And it was cool because we had barbers. We had like six barbers. We had like seven stylists. It was one of the biggest salons in Oceanside. And that was pretty dope. And then I just felt like I needed to branch off and just kind of learn how to do things on my own and quit being so reliant on everyone else. So then I moved to a suite. 
Um, did that for about um, eight years. Then I moved to another suite, but I've always been in Oceanside. But it's just, I just felt like I learned a lot from the salon setting with booth renters. And I just mm -hmm. needed to go to a more solo thing to really hone into my skills and to make sure that I was focusing on the right things that I needed to focus on. I like that yeah. because that's kind of like almost like how things went for me. You know, I worked at a shop for six years and then, well, I mean, the pandemic hit. So I was like forced right. out of the shop for a minute. Right. And it like it kind of pushes you towards trying to figure out what you're going to do next mm -hmm. or making you say, hey, well, I, my goal is to get my own spot or whatever. So what what would be the next step? Right. So going into uh, the suites. um Let's talk about that transition. What did you start to learn? What did you start to gain? What was the mm. ups? What was the pros and cons of it? Well, I learned that in a shop, everything I needed was there. So if I didn't know how to finger wave or if I didn't know how to do something because it wasn't my expertise, I always had someone at the next station or someone two boots down mm -hmm. who can kind of assist me with that. I really had to just get really knowledgeable and learn how to do some things because I had no one really to turn to for help. Right. I also had to make sure that all of my styling equipment, all of my products, I needed to make sure I was already um, stocked up on everything I needed to have because there was no one for me to go to because there mm -hmm. was no one else in my room but me. Right. There ain't no, uh, can I borrow some of this or borrow right. that? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Totally relatable. Okay. And then you started, what suites did you go to first? I went to a place called Ocean Signs, Ocean Shine Salon in Oceanside, and then I worked there for eight years, and then I went to uh, my salon suite, and then I was, um, now I'm currently at uh, my salon suite for the last four years. That's crazy. Okay, so I'm at the solo salons. Right. And you say you did eight years there? I did four years. Four years total. there? Mm-hmm. Um, and then you went to my salon, what my is it called My salon now? suite. It's okay. like a... It's the same thing. Same thing, it's the but, same but, thing. But, but the rent is, but the rent and stuff is a little cheaper, huh? A little cheaper. <laughs> I like that. I like it I too. I like that. You got to cut the overhead. Right. Products and everything is already enough. Right. And as a business owner, that is very key to focus on how can We're you cut that We're all looking overhead. to save money. And I wanted a window because I felt like in my little suite, I couldn't see outside and I really needed to see the sunshine. Yeah, just a little energy. Yeah. That's dope. Okay, so um, what would you say? What would you say uh, is your specialty? Like, what is people coming in mm. there always after you about? I would say a lot of ladies like to come and get silk press, and they silk press, silk press, silk press. I love it because I love beautiful, flowy, natural, big hair. Okay. Um, I also get a lot of the. Um, short haircut still, but really, I would say the majority of my business is silk press, but I love it. And you do everything though. You can cut. You can. Yes, but yeah. I don't do a jerry curl and I don't do braids. You don't do a jerry curl <laughs> and you don't do braids. People better not be asking for no jerry curl. You'd be curls. surprised. Okay. Jerry curls though? Jerry curls. Not the Hawaiian silky? No, not the Hawaiian silky. A jerry curl. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't done one of those since I took my test, and I will not do it. You will not do I it. I won't do it. Okay. But okay. to each his own. That's wild. You said the Jerry Curl. That threw me off a little bit. Carefree Curl. So talk to us about the process of what you're doing with this silk wrap thing. Talk um, to me about well, that. It, it's very funny because it seems like people think it's a new thing, but these are all just the same things that Grandma used to do on the stovetop. Yeah. They're just... With less oil, so the hair is more flowy and more more natural looking. And it's for those ladies who like to go in between um, maybe wearing their natural hair texture mm -hmm. and then having something soft and flowy. Just mm. gives you a little bit more versatility so you can go back and forth. Mm. I like that. I like that. The mm. complete look. So talk to me about Oceanside. You know, you've been, you've been doing hair in Oceanside for... You said 24? 20, 24. You've been in Oceanside years. for 30 years, yes, right? Yes, I have. And you are originally from Florida? Yes, military brat. Okay. So how much time did you spend in Florida first? Let's talk about that first. Um, we've been all over. So I've been military my whole life. So Florida's more of my hometown, but I mm -hmm. have kind of been 
different places, North Carolina, What part of Georgia, Florida, though? St. Augustine, Florida, the oldest city in the United States of America, if you didn't already know that. Oh, she just gave you Facts. Okay. Fun Facts. Fact. Fun fact. Facts. Fun fact. Facts. 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 Yeah. Okay. St. Augustine, Florida. And then you came to Oceanside. You've been there for 30 years. Yeah. What? Let's talk about Oceanside a little bit. What, what do you remember, like... What are some of the things that you remember about Oceanside that you think kind of shaped you or your experience? You um, well, I, you know, I went to Oceanside High School, but what I think most shaped me is I would go get my hair done every Thursday. And I worked at a little place and I worked at a music store and I would go save my money because I wanted to get my hair done every week. So then, um, and that's when that's when music used to drop on Tuesdays, huh? Man, we used to go to Sam Goody or the. Uh, I worked at Blockbuster Music where you can oh, listen to see? it first. Oh man! And then so I just, um, my mom was getting her hair done with this lady named Brenda Davis from Talk of the Town, and then I started going to her shop, and I just left it there, and I would go every Saturday morning, and um, get my hair done, and I just loved the culture, and then I always was kind of dibbling and dabbling on things myself at home. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? Let me go do this professionally, get licensed. And um, I just loved it. And she just showed me love. And she was like, okay, come in. Let's first start making you be the shampoo girl. I was the shampoo girl. I would come in and shampoo for the barbers on Sundays. Mm -hmm. um, and I just fell in love with it. And that's kind of where it kind of, um, it kind of did it for me. I had a lot of great style, stylist family barber family mm -hmm. and we kind of just it was more united then we weren't separate we were in booths so we were always see each other every single day and um that just really it spoke to my heart and i just wanted to do hair and be part of that you know it's a yeah. little different now because we're more separate it is it is different yeah yeah but i do so do you miss do you miss like being in the shop with like i do miss people? the camaraderie because i miss us like Jones and on the barbers and their clients laugh and then we're out and have this big discussion and we're all bagging on each other and it was just love it was like those are my brothers and it's like that's different now but I do appreciate the intimacy that I have mm -hmm. with clients if they have hair issues or if they're going through something mm -hmm. or if we just want to just be by ourselves it's right. cool right. you come in with your bonnet nobody cares because there's Nobody's no guys asking, in the shop no questions yeah nobody that was the thing I was like man how are they making a shop work with Men and women, like barbers and stylists, like it seems like the obvious thing to do. But then it's like that's a clap. That that's a, that could be an issue. It was so fun though. I bet it was. But if you have a hair issue, with all barbers, but yeah, yeah. If you're coming in with alopecia, you coming in it's there and you got a little spot and you want to talk about it, you don't want to do that in front of right. the world. Right. You want to do that in a private setting. Right. That is one of the benefits to. Having uh, the soda suite, uh, right. well, in my case, and you're at my my salon suite, suite. my salon suite. Mm -hmm. That's fire. I'm telling so hey Sola, y'all heard this first, man. If they come with the my suites, what is it called? My, my salon suite. My salon suites up here. Yeah, and the rent is cheaper. That's right. And they this close to my yep. business. Mine is I'm across the street, and I moved during COVID. I love it here. Brand new building. But it is. It's high. The overhead is high. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to live. You know. That's all we're trying to do, right? <laughs> Outside of that, ocean. What? Are, anything else about Oceanside? Tell me something else about Oceanside. Mm -hmm. Oceanside used to be a great place. It's just so used different. To be? It's just different now. It's different now. I don't know if I'm in an old, in the older, different headspace. I don't know. It's just different now. What's more like. You know, Juneteenth and we all meet up at McCabe's little bar. You know, it was just different, you know, I, but I still have those same friends. But it's just, it's just a little bit My different. My church used to go down to June, on Juneteenth. We used to be down Man, there. My church. Do haircuts. Shout out Friendly beach. Church of God in Christ. Oh, you went to Everybody else stop playing. Okay. We used to be right over there in Pasolo, yeah. right there getting right. down for church. Right. Yeah. Shout out Matadami and his whole family. And everybody over there on that side of the thing. Okay, yeah, on the east side. Um, that's my guy. Yeah, the east side, man. Shout out to them, man. But uh, yeah, it used to be rough over there too. Super rough. But church, we the, I go to church, to church and go home. They used to try to take us to the park over there oh, no. uh, during church. I mm -mm. said, no, nah, I don't think we should be. Look, nope, church or the basketball <laughs> course. Nope, <laughs> ain't looking good. Yeah. 
So you remember the drive-ins and when oh, Coast I Highway the was Hill Street and uh, oh, unisex yeah. barbershop. And, man, everybody worked there. Yeah. And man, see, that's where we were like, we had our few barbers. We had our whole, like nine stylists in Toggle Town. And then unisex, we would always meet out. We would drop it to McKay. Yeah. And it, we would have barbecues, volleyball games at the barbecue. It was just so dope. It's just everyone's so kind of spread out now, so it's kind of changed the game a little bit. Yeah. We still all do talk, but it's just, it's just separate. Yeah. And people yeah. don't think that we talk. So when someone's like, oh, you know, so-and-so messed up my hair or did something, we're like, no, we, we kind of know each other. So I know she didn't do that because yeah. <laughs> I know her fundamentals and she might be old school or whatever. I know she wouldn't do certain things mm -hmm. because... I know her. They don't all think that we know each other. But I think that's the problem with the clients, though. And that right. be getting the, the clients get a little bit messier than the, than the actual mm -hmm. professionals because, like, I hear things, too. And you know when to believe it, too, though. Right. Absolutely. But then Absolutely. you also know, like, nah, nah, that don't yeah. sound right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's why I miss the... The camaraderie. The camaraderie the of the and booths. the barbers and everything. Yeah. Huh? What you think... What do you think, like... Ruin that. I really think that the, the 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 death of that was the sweet. Yeah. I think it was the sweet because it was just, you know, we're, we were right up on each other. Boom, stylist, stylist, stylist. Barbers might be over there. Mm -hmm. But I think that that, even though it's nice, so you, you step away from, you know, gossip if there's salon gossip or, you know, maybe the women interacting with the men, if there's more like moments where a woman might have hair issues. Mm -hmm. But I think that I think that the sweet ruined it, even though I love the sweet, because but I love the camaraderie that's crazy of the because You've been in the sweets way longer than me. And what's crazy to me is like to me, the sweet thing only started popping when the pandemic happened. But for you, like this is all this has been a thing. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yep. Because I was in a shop downtown Oceanside, and we had eight suites. I was in a nail shop, mm. and they had little suites. But I I did that for eight years before I even went to a solo. Wow. So that was a thing for me, and then that's when I can tell that a lot of the black shops mostly start getting smaller, and then those kind of faded out in Oceanside, because we had like what we had talk of the town, we had um, culture shock. Um, those are the two main black shops for stylists. And then there was like unisex and Tri-City Barbers, um, for the guys, but yeah, Tri-City Barbershop, Tri Bar oh, Emerald, yeah, shout yeah, them out, LJ. right there by mm -hmm. Pop Popeye, shout out Lil James, Lil James, I'm talking about Lil James was, was cutting me and my homeboys up for our prom, when we was going to prom, wow, <laughs> Lil James was the, the barber up in there talking trash to us, man, like, we walking in there, you know, we first, you know, we in, we seniors now. We trying to smoke a little bit. Okay. All that. Is. We walking in. He's like, boy, y'all smell like an acre in here. <laughs> He's like, what? An acre? Now, see, that's yeah. my guy. That's yeah, like one of my no, best Yeah, friends. big shout out to Lil James because he, man, one thing about him is I did always see him on that grind. No matter where he was at, he was yeah. cutting hair and he was making it look good, man. You know what I mean? No matter what he was going through. Or no matter how it really was reality, right. when I was a youngster, I was looking at him like, yo, man, I want to do that. Yeah. And I ain't going to lie. And a baby blue mink fur. That's yeah. how we're going to do it. Yeah. What's <laughs> Sorry, the... LJ. You didn't have the pink <laughs> one like Cameron, but it, it looked just it like blue. the Cameron one, but it was blue. It though. was blue. It baby blue. Baby. North Powder. Carolina. Powder. Yeah. No. Nah, big shout out to him, man. Um, big shout out to Mr. Washington too. Yeah. Uh, who else, man? There was a lot of great barbers in those. Yeah, because you had like the white, you had Rush, the white had... Rush, my boy yeah. Rush, be on the phone, Detroit play style, yeah. I'm like hey, yeah, <laughs> I'm ready to get you right, right, right. We said I bought my first Mike house off seven. I bought my first house off seven dollar haircut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, all right, Rush, man. But and yeah, see, well, you know, all them dudes are cool. Looking at cool. them like, yo, man, y'all dudes is cool. And it really, for me, like, even when I lived in Virginia, like, I thought the whole culture, the barbershop and all that stuff, and shout out to culture, you know what I mean? Cause right. it comes up, that word comes up in all conversations. So mm -hmm. shout out to Tage, too. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, 
that whole environment and and that demographic of people like mm -hmm. is it's just always been special for me man and you know what one thing i do appreciate as an outsider looking into the barber world is like i come from like you know mike the barber rush dwight yeah. lj and then to see them go into like okay then here comes donnell from kingdom cuts and then you run into like tage and you run into like new barbers like uh, like your boy Tree Shrimp. Like Tree Shrimp. You know what I'm saying? Shrimp, saying? You know what I'm saying? Doing his and thing, and I know? like how you guys still are because we recognize that our community is small. Yeah. So even though you guys are all spread out and you guys are still competitors, but you guys are still in your own place and there's enough for everybody to eat. And I'll and tell I, you one thing though, one thing that's crazy though, I never look at anybody like I don't look at everybody as my competitor. Right. I really don't. Right. And you know what's funny is like it tastes. For example, like he got three shops now. Yeah. He just opened a shop up here. He is doing it. I still don't look at him as a competitor though. Yeah. And why? I can why? look at him and be like, oh, I got a lot to learn as far as because you know his marketing and promo strategies yeah. is unmatched. Yeah. Like, and that's the thing when you open a business, you got to know. How to put in what you're gonna have to put in to make that business flourish right and i believe that he does that yeah. outside of even being just a barber that part of his business is like yeah what pushes it forward you know what i mean yeah so like I, and i don't look at that i look at that as inspirational i'm inspired Absolutely. by that I like it's motivating you sure, know he I mean? inspires like, me, me because he's yeah. marketing mar i like maybe i should do more because yeah, we always and we all should show. because Absolutely. we have nothing to lose. And there's enough for everybody. And there's enough for everybody. Yeah. That's why that's the only reason I could bring that's the only reason I could do a podcast and be like, oh, have I wouldn't have Taper Tage or uh Kingdom Cut one King right. you know, Kingdom Cuts on. Why would I do that if I was looking at y'all as competitors? Right. And I don't want anybody I'm gonna look in the camera right now. I don't want y'all to ever look at me as a competitor, man. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not here to compete with you. I'm competing with myself. Right. I'm trying to get better every day. And some of the things that y'all do, I learn from. If it's good or bad. Right. I learn from the good and the bad. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm just trying to do what I'm doing over here. Yeah. And it's all love. And that's what this podcast is about. Right. And thank you for bringing that point out. Because yeah. it's a big point. Our strangers, the strangers should not be our biggest supporters. Right. Our friends, our family should be our biggest support. And, that's, and what that's what this is about. I see on our side, like, you know, we have so many of like the OG um, black stylists. You know, we got Brenda, Patrice, Sonia. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we all are cool with each other. All of us, Michelle. Yeah. I mean, we hang out because we really like each other's company. And even though we are doing business in the same area, like you said, it's not competition. It's not. We all just really cool with each other. And yep. those are my girls. If I'm like, hey, I'm not in town. Can you take care of this for me? Whatever. Okay, right. girl, I got you. Or, hey, how you do this? I don't do that. Can I come watch? I mean, I've yeah. learned from all of them. And that's, I think that's amazing. The good old, uh, the complete look. The complete look <laughs> by Mashallah. By Mashallah. Yes, sir. All right. Um. A big thing for you is the integrity of the hair, mm -hmm. right? Women are wearing all these different styles, uh, which is beautiful. It's yeah. amazing. You're able to do that. But the integrity of the hair and making sure that it stays healthy and all that stuff is a big important factor for you with your clients so talk to us about that um well absolutely and it's it's just that the internet shows you so much whether it be wigs and and braided styles and different other protective styles like crochet color um and it's even showing you how to do things on your own at home which is dangerous when it comes to certain things so i'm just really i'm a person that will tell you no or i'll be like hey i don't think your hair is ready for this yet let's kind of get your hair healthy by doing different things like steam treatments, protein treatments, um, uh, conditioning treatments, um, you do the detoxes and all that stuff. Too. All of that. We could, whatever we need to do to get your hair healthy. And then I'll let you know, okay, maybe instead of rushing it, I know this girl looks platinum blonde and it's been one appointment. Mm -hmm. Your hair is not going to do that. Let's take it in two, or maybe it might take us three. This is what you'll look like in between and kind of set real expectations because mm. I don't want to push your hair because if you like the wigs and all of that, that's for fun. It's for fun to do it now. But when you're, when you're over the wig, it's too hot or you just don't want to do it anymore. What do you have left? We need to have a good 
foundation so that you can rock your hair, whether it be a short style, long press, whatever. so you have edges. You know, we just need to make right. sure we take care of your hair and teaching you how to live inside of the wig that you still need to do, you know, take care of your hair inside of the wig so that you still have that for later because you don't know when you're not going to want to wear wigs anymore. Yeah, so don't, ladies, that, you know what, this is great. This mm -hmm. is what we need to hear. Don't think you can just slap that thing up there yeah. and just hide from the world. Yeah. Because there's going to be a point, at some point, one yeah. way or another. Yeah. You're not going to want to wear it. to see what yep. the heck is going on up under there. Yeah. And then a lot of ladies, you know, it's it's something I've been seeing a lot in, the, in black women where they've been having hair issues like psoriasis of the scalp or some sort of um, dermatitis or eczema in the scalp. And it's like we need to make sure that we can still treat those. So if you are going to put a, a wig on then we need to make sure we're addressing the problem too. So it's just... Air it out or something, air, right? I mean, there's certain things you got to do. There's treatments that you can do. You there's, can't wear a freaking thing, a, a whole unit on top of your head right. and then put a bonnet on top of that yeah. and think that's going to be okay. You, can, you, gotta take, is, you gotta take care of the scalp. The scalp, you have to. The scalp is, a, yeah. is pissed off and right now. And keep up with your trims because what you don't trim is going to keep splitting up. So... There's things that we need to handle on that part for the hair health, and then you can wear the fun stuff. Your scalp is angry, and your scalp is going to thank you for listening to Mashala. Because Absolutely. I'm telling you. But that's, that's old school. The new school teaches you, oh, let's just go do hair. Let's just put wigs on. No, there's hair underneath. So that's why I do appreciate you know, where I come from as far as the, the stylist that I grew up in. Mm -hmm. Because we care about the integrity of your hair. These are some real, like, great women that I've learned under. And they taught me to care about the hair. And if you got to say no, you have to say no. We're caring about the hair. And being more realistic about what you Absolutely. can tell, what you can deliver for a client. Right. Because some people, they, they're trying to get that money. So they're like, yeah, I can get it that way yeah. today. Yeah. And it's, that's not true. It's not realistic most of the time, not in a healthy way. In a healthy way. Or, right. oh, I like this style. Okay, it's going to look a little bit different on you because maybe her hair texture is a little bit different. Yeah. Your face is shaped a little bit different. Just to be honest and have a real conversation so you're not out there. That's a know, part of our consultation. That's absolutely. our job. Absolutely. Honesty. Yeah. And, yeah. and I try to hold firm on that, just being honest. That's what's up. Yeah. And that's why you get the complete look. By Mashala. Yeah. By Mashala. Oceanside, California. Yes, Lord. Okay. So, um, over the years, you've been in the game for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, how are you staying up on the newest trends? The new world? Because mm. that's important, right? Right. You know, and I am a big firm believer in education, education, education. I was, I grew up in a shop where the owner of the shop, Brenda Davis, I hate to keep saying her name. No, we're sure. not going to get to hating to say yeah. her name. Brenda, Brenda, Shout Brenda. Brenda. Shout out to Brenda. Brenda was out here and talking to town. She always made sure we were educated. We had to take, we did hair shows and went here and there. And we always go to hair shows and learn new things. And if I see it, like on, say, if I see it on TikTok, if I see it on Instagram, I'll go try to get education behind it. And then a lot of the brands that I do use, they offer continuous education. Mm. So if I use Loran, Loran has continuous education. Design Essentials has continuous education. Avalon has some things that they might do. Or it might be on um, like hair extensions or I've even done something with Carl J. You know, it's it's. I try to get out there as much as I can so I can learn new things because, you know, I'm so used into the to the everyday press, weave, short haircut. There might be something totally new I've never heard about, and I'm going to go learn about it so I can offer it to my clients. That's fine. Mm -hmm. That's how you stay relevant, right? That's how you stay relevant. Absolutely. I'm just saying, because these kids be coming in and talking about, yeah, man, I want the Edgar cut. I said, yeah. what? <laughs> I just learned about the Edgar cut. Yeah. <laughs> I said, what? You got to learn how to do Edgar now. Right. You know what I mean? And that's right. the, what's going to keep you in the game. So, yeah, that's fire, man. I really I really like that. So when somebody's trying to book with you, how, how does that process go? I am old school. I know I've tried the booking apps and all of that. So I am, I, you can call me. You can send me a message on my Facebook. You mm -hmm. can send me a message on my business page or my business Instagram because I like to make sure I can kind of, fit everything in where I 
can get you in. And I don't want you to sit. I don't want you to be looking at me all day. And I don't want you to have to look at you all day. I know mm. you got things you got to do. So I want to get you in and out as quickly as possible while getting a good service. Yeah. That's dope. Okay. So we're going to provide those links for sure. Um, man, let's get off subject a little bit. What's man. up, Let's Therese? just talk about what... What I mean, what you listening to nowadays, man? Oh, it's hard. It's hard because I'm a '90s girl, and it's hard. It's real hard. Okay. I would say I'm digging that. Uh, what's his name? The London guy. What's his? I don't know what his name is. Oh, um, he sound like uh, Marvin Gaye. Yes, he is so fire. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? London. Yeah, we know who you. London. Yeah, he fire. fire. He, he fire. fire. He fire. He fire. Yeah. He fire. We're not gonna. We're not gonna front on him. But what I'm, is his name? Somebody. October like, London. October London. There the it boy go. is the business. See, I knew I was you good. know. But I'm a '90s girl. I'm an early 2000s girl, and I'm like, I like my Usher still. I like my Nas. I like my old school Jay Z. You know, I. I like my. I still listen to my Outkast. I like. I'm just an old school hip hop girl. You said Outkast, huh? Of course. So what you think <laughs> about that? Uh, <laughs> what you think about that? Three thousand. I album. think it's dope. The new Blue Sun is fire. I think it's dope, and I like. You know, I, I was expecting some lyrics. I was expecting lyrics. Yeah. It threw me off, but I was like, okay. He let us know in the first title well, of the did. first song. He said, I really wish I could have did a rap album. But I can't. But I'm going to hit this flute. Because right now, a lot of it's trash. There are some really great um, artists out there, but a lot of it's trash. And you know what? Give me something off the beaten path. I think the brother is dope. I, man, I know the brother's dope. Absolutely. One of my favorite. Absolutely. And I like the way he just hit us with the flute the whole time. Yeah, just hit me. And we got a whole new symbol for when we done talking. <laughs> right. You just sit and hit him That's with the it. flute. That's I'm it. I'm done talking I'm with done you. I'm done talking. I have nothing to say. He already said that he thought hip hop was becoming to be trash. And, and, and so, you know, he's true fact, to what say. If you throw that on before bedtime, yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's going to be serene and peaceful, ain't it? You go night night. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're going to name that yeah. right away. Okay. That's what's up, but man. Old want, school. Who we going to shout out today? We got we always do some shout outs every week. So who we shouting out this week? Hmm. They got to be in our community. Somebody that just... you would like to see on the show, maybe. Okay. Or, you know, somebody that you see doing anything out in our community. I'm going to shout out my boy, Gerard Malone. He's a new, bar um, excuse me, Gerard Malloy. He's a new barber. He just got his license. He was in the army, and he goes by GT uh, Money. I'll give you his exact name. Don't ask me because you. Oh, um, but, but, he, but he's he's a new barber. Shout uh, out to the new barbers out there, yeah, man. I have to look it up. I want to do it. An overnight process, yeah. man. You got to grind it I out. I just think that he's pass some cards out. He just and got really his get license. Out he just and got his license. And that's big. And I knew how. Yeah. I felt. And that's a huge step. Yeah. So keep going, my brother. If uh, if you need any tips from me, let me yeah. know, man, because I'm here to help. Yeah. Somebody had to help me, too, you know. And so. I think he's at the Lion's Den, so I'll get more information about that. But, you know, I just believe in paying it forward. And just like how Brenda helped me, if I got to say your name or say whoever's name. That's what it there's is. There's enough for everybody to eat. For everybody to eat. Let me see who I want to shout out. Yeah, no, nah, that's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. Who do who could I who could I shout out, man? Soul Sundays, man. I can't get enough shout out for Soul man. Sunday. Is Soul Sundays fire or not? Oh my gosh, that was dope. And I and I've been seeing it on Instagram, and I've been like, oh my god, but the crowd's too young. The crowd's too young. No, it's not. I went and it blew my mind. It's for us. It is for us. Oh if you don't want to be like. Put your hands on the ground, twerk, twerk, twerk. You want a nice vibe on a, a beautiful live day. Music with food, drinks, Man. a live band, beautiful artists, beautiful people. Yeah. You need to go to Soul Sundays. Fire. Yeah. That was the eight year anniversary, this last one, right? And I'm going to be at the next one. You better understand I that. I don't think they're doing nothing in December, but no. they will be back in January. Absolutely. Right? Don't act like we didn't tell y'all. I think it's the 21st. Make sure you get your ticket early because your girl's going to be there because it was the business. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that, man. Shout out to my boy, Blizzy Blake. Shout out to the whole band. 
my drummer man, uh, Shad. See, I be ruining names, man. Don't don't get me to. I'm not. I'm gonna tag him anyway. Yes. But yo, beautiful experience, man. It was great. Um, and y'all, I needed to make a correction. Gerard's name name is GT the Barber seventy eight on Instagram. New barber, it's pretty dope. You guys should check him out. Yeah, put some respect on. Put some GT, respect on his name. Put some respect on GT. The barber. The barber. The barber. Six hundred. Seven eight. Seven eight. So I mean, one of the things that I always like to ask professionals like yourself, mm. right, with experience. Yes. Or some of the what's what's some of the game you want to hand down to people that may be trying to break into the industry that you're in? Yeah. Or people that are in the industry that you're in that just haven't been in it as long as you. What are the things that you've learned that you want to pass down? Well, I think that the game has changed a lot with social media and you could do a lot there, but I think there's still something in being able to touch someone. So whether it be you're out, like I used to go out and I was like, I'm going to go hand out business cards for like 30 minutes every day. Mm -hmm. I would pick a shopping plaza, go hand out business cards. And this was pre Instagram, pre mm -hmm. Facebook. When you had to be out when there. You, you had to be That's out there. That's the old school part. It's Talk the to them about part. that. I mean, we went, we had to really grind. You know, you, you get you a couple of girls. Come on. Okay. I'll make y'all look all good. You guys go out and, and, and show my work because someone's going to ask you, Hey girl, where'd you get your hair done? You know? So now we just, um, now I do a look, I do some marketing there and I know I need to get better at that to kind of, to, to kind of appeal to, um, the younger people, but mm -hmm. my good fundamental, even I have great referrals from people who have, you know, been with me for a long time where I always stay consistent, but I would just say continuous education, keep yourself educated, keep yourself educated, use good quality tools, um, whatever class you can go to expo, see something new. Even I can learn a lot from somebody on the internet that might be a 13 year old girl. I'm like, Hmm, I never thought about doing that like that. Let me take what you're showing me with my professional, mm -hmm. um, ism and bring those together. Cause it's all about work. the ism. It's all about the ism. It's, 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 it's sure. right there, Preach. you know? So well, I, you know what? I will take a cookie. Let me see. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but I think that if you can, Kind of just keep yourself learning. And and I'll even, you know, I've asked my barber friends, can I come sit in your chair so I can work on my fade a little bit better? It's just keep yourself learning. And I think if you can keep yourself learning, you can keep yourself hot and relevant. Yeah. Um, and just be kind. Be kind and care about their hair because they do. You know, and, and don't try to rush it. And, you know, they'll call me, hey, girl, I can wash my own hair. You're not going to clean it like I need it to be clean. So mm -hmm. that new stuff with come in with your hair washed, I get it for a braider, but for a hairstylist, I personally don't understand it. You don't do that. I'm going to give you a complete service at the Complete Look by Mashallah. Because it's going to be complete when you gonna do it. It's going to be complete. And that's what I like. Yeah, it's going to be complete. And I think that that's important. And you see things women are complaining like, oh my God, I had to wash my own hair. And I'm like, why? You go into a hair salon. Because a lot of people don't realize, but yeah, we can wash our hair in the shower. Yeah, we can put our head in the sink. Yeah. But when you go to the professional yeah. and you sit back in that bowl and they yeah. got the right temperature and the right product. It's an escape for you. Who doesn't like to get their that's head worth the, That's it's, worth the money. It's worth and it's included in my service. So mm. I want to make sure that, you know, you've had a long day. you got kids. You know, you had a long day at work. Whatever's going on. You want to come to the, the shop, talk with the girls, and you want to get your hair washed. And it's all about, again, that camaraderie. You want to mm. have camaraderie, and I'm going to take care of it for you. Mm. Mm. Good cookie, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. Good cookie. Man. Mm -hmm. mm. Look, we're professional Ooh, on this look show. Look at you. There you go. We're Thank you. We're professional on this show. We have I, prefer, I, prefer, I appreciate your professionalism. <laughs> but I'm a cookie plate. Yeah. I gave you that just a little too quick. My bad. Mm. It was delicious, um, though. Yeah, from Barron's. Mm -hmm. Shout out Barry, man, our unofficial sponsor of the Hot Tea <laughs> Podcast. Thank you. I love their fresh squeezed orange juice in the morning. Oh, juice. Mm. Cheerio. Mm. So, uh, what else you want to give? I mean, tell me something else, man. You know, what else? Hmm. 
I feel like you're you're uh, like a blooming onion. There's so many layers. Absolutely. There's a lot to me. You know, so, you know. What, what, what kind of movies you like? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of a cornball. I like the old we're school movies. We're coming up on the Christmas. We're coming up on oh, the Christmas season. Hallmark we're, Channel is like... top three Christmas Hallmark right Channel. Now. Okay, first of all, I'm going to say this Christmas is probably my number one favorite. Anything with Candace Cameron on the Hallmark Channel. Okay. Um, excuse me, Candace Cameron Beret. 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 Don't, don't forget the Beret, Beret. part. And, um, you know, I get a little ratchet. I like the little to be ratchet Christmas movies. Okay. Like Christmas in Miami. Little ratchet. But little you know, ratchet. It's but a little ratchet, but I like it. What's not ratchet in Miami, though? It's it happens. Saying. It's natural. It's natural. Okay. But Christmas movies, to be mm -hmm. Christmas movies, it's, it's my jam. And after I, I work hard and then I come back to work, my clients want to talk about things they've seen on TV. So I got to make sure I'm well versed in everything. The housewives, the to be ratchetness, the mm. news. All See, of that's that. a part of connecting with your clients, though, right? Absolutely. Okay, because I feel like, you know, me, I have to be up on sports, you mm. know, the current events, different things like that, to be able to connect with my clients, which that's who I am naturally. Right. But at the same time, though, if you slack off, you know. You know, if right. you're not really digging into what sports or, or whatever's going on in the world, and then people coming in talking, and you're looking at them like, and you feel a disconnect right, right. away, right? right? So it's important to do those things yeah. just to make sure you stay homework. connected with your... Homework. Yeah, yeah. You got to make sure, you, like, I, I we like our shade room and all that, because we get together, and sometimes I'll have, like, three women in there. And we're talking about, girl, he did what? What? Oh, no, he didn't. Well, you know what I heard? You know, y'all having mimosas and everything. We had a mimosa, huh? and we're just having a great time. <laughs> and it's just fellowship, if you will, you know. And we just like to come together and, and, and talk about silly stuff sometimes because life is serious. And sometimes you want to break and escape at the shop. I've heard that. I've yeah. heard that. Okay, man. So, uh, so if people want to stay connected with... Miss Mashala, tell them your hats, man. Give them all your, you know what I mean? Run it down. You can reach me on Facebook. My business page is The Complete Look by Mashala. That's M-A-C-H-A-L-A. -A -A. Or you can reach me on Instagram at The Complete Look by Mashala. And I always respond. If I don't respond right away, give me about two hours, but I always get back to you the same day. So holla at your girl. Mmm. Really, eat that cookie. I sure am about to eat my cookie. cookie. Hey, you know what it is, man. It's the Hot Seat Podcast, man. I'm your host, Trees Trims, man. I'm with the one and only Mashala with the complete the look. Complete. Put some respect on it. Respect yes, on Lord. my name. Ocean size, very young. Ocean? Yee hee. Okay, <laughs> you know what I mean? 30 years. We put it down. She's been in the game and she's giving game. So make sure y'all check this episode. If it's helpful to you, if you enjoyed it, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe and do all that YouTube stuff they be talking about. But man, if you don't do any of that, make sure you just watch this episode and support somebody in your community doing something great. Until then, until the next time, go get the money! Peace, y'all. Yeah. I think that was excellent, guys. I think we did a beautiful job. What well, do you think? Excellent is just cookie.